Precious Father, precious, precious Father, we come before you, Lord, thanking you and praising you for who you are. We thank you, dear God, for your enormity, your blessing, your favor, your goodness, your righteousness, your holiness. We thank you, dear God, for loving us so much. And we just come before you, Lord, with open hearts and minds and souls, with a humble and contrite heart. Give us a humble and con contrite heart, Lord, for those are the ones that you look upon from your kingly throne in, in the kingdom of heaven. Father, thank you for your mercy, grace, and truth. And we just praise you and thank you. We love you. We worship you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Chris, will you turn down my microphone and turn down the uh, podium mic? You can turn them all off, actually. I'm sorry? Oh. Okay. Well. There was no view. Go, okay. Go to my drive. Click on my drive. Is it this one? It's the left tab. Yeah, there it is. Now then go to view. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Present. Present. Thank you. Well, we have all kinds of glitches today, and the kids and Haley and Pastor Ray will share with you all that went on with the van. Uh, I guess it was quite the scene. There was the the van was so full of smoke that you couldn't even see the kids. <laughs> oh my gosh! And uh, and then um, it was out in the middle of Seventy Second Avenue, right close to uh, Federal. So. It was a busy thing, but we thank God that all of everybody is safe. Amen? So, you have to turn my mic down a little bit. It's number 10, I believe. Turn it down a little bit. T testing, 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 testing. I think that's good. Thank you. All right. Part 22, review. Jesus speaks to his churches. Amen? God speaking to his churches. He's always speaking to his churches and to us. So let's, uh, let, let me uh, share with you in review that the Lord God Jesus is going to destroy all false Christian churches, all false religions, all the idols of Satan. The Lord Jesus comes on a white horse with us following him from heaven and will destroy the religious Babylon stationed in Rome and then Jesus will destroy the commercial Babylon stationed in Iraq, which spreads over the entire earth. Then Jesus will destroy the one world government and the military of Satan. Amen? It's all coming, to, uh, coming into view. So let us uh, go into the next PowerPoint screen and read uh, a little bit of a review in Revelation 19, 15, and 16. It says, now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. Yes. Fill that in, uh, in your blanks. Everybody, fill in the blanks so that you can let God's word penetrate your heart and mind to remind you how much he loves you and cares for you and what he's done for you. So now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations. He's going to strike the nations that are against him. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. Now this is talking about the millennial reign. When Jesus reigns for a thousand years from Jerusalem, he's going to rule with a rod of iron. He's going to be loving and kind, but he's going to be totally firm with everyone. There's not going to be that, there's not going to be that much crime, if any crime. And I'll talk more about it in just a moment. He himself, blank, treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. The wrath of God is upon all who are born, even babies. The wrath of God is upon them. But God sent His Son to deliver us from His own wrath. The fierceness of His wrath. God hates sin. He hates sin so much that he 
allowed his son to be, dis to be killed. He was beaten and tortured and killed for sin. God hates sin. That's why it's very, very important to share the word of the Lord Jesus Christ with those because God will only accept the blood of his son for forgiveness of your sins. No pope, no priest, no pastor, no, no religious ceremony, nothing else will do. Only the blood of his son cleansing you from unrighteousness. And we must share that with other people. I know you know that. We need to share that with other people. Uh, he has, the Lord Jesus Christ has on his robe and on his thigh a name written. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. He's going to rule. In the next PowerPoint screen we read, And I saw the beast. Wait, is that what it, what it oh, said? Huh? I saw the... That's not what it is. I forgot what it was. Let's see. I saw the... Oh, it is the beast. I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies. I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him, Jesus, who sat on the horse and against his army. The people on the earth are going to fight against God. The beast and the kings of the earth and their armies are going to gather to make war against the Lord Jesus Christ uh, who sits on the white horse against his army who is us. Then the beast was captured. It's not going to be much of a battle because no one can resist the Lord God. The beast will be captured and with him the false prophet who works signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Those two were cast blank. Alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword which were proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse and all the birds were filled with their flesh. God has pronounced judgment and he, he killed all those uh, soldiers, those enemies of his who were fighting against him at the battle of Armageddon. In the next PowerPoint screen we read, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, the abyss, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and he bound him for a blank years. A thousand years, yes. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he could not deceive the blank. Nations. The nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Hallelujah. The Lord God is going to seize the beast, uh, the devil, Satan, and cast him into the bottomless pit along with the false prophet and the Antichrist. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we do not really re realize, unless you get deep into God's word, we do not realize how much evil there really is in this world. There's so much, it is unbelievable. As we continue to read, though, uh, let us go to, uh, to Isaiah. Yes. Now, we're going to talk about the millennial reign, the thousand-year millennial reign. It's going to be completely different. Let's read. The wolf also shall blank with the lion. Dwell live. He will live with the lion. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling, the steer together. And a little child shall, shall lead them. Would you let your little child right now lead a steer? Of course not. <laughs> but then you can. God said, you, 
the child will be able to do that. And here's why. The cow and the bear shall graze. The young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat what? Straw. straw. It's not spinach. It's straw. <laughs> straw. Like an ox. The nursing blank. The nursing blank. Child shall play by the cobra's hole. And the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den, the poisonous snake's den, and they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the... What? Knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge of the Lord. Thank you, brother. As the waters cover the sea. This is going to be a completely different era, brothers and sisters. Let's continue to read a little bit more. And then I'll describe it. For behold, I create new heaven and a new earth. Now, God poured out 21 judgments of his wrath on the earth and its people. Yet, the totality of the earth was not destroyed. The earth lay in havoc. Although it laid in havoc, it was a mess. Jesus, listen carefully. Excuse me. Jesus restores the earth or freshens it up. And there is no crying, but rejoicing. There's planting, harvesting, and joy is restored to Jerusalem and the earth. And the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create for behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Let's continue to read. It says, For no more shall an... Anybody know what that is? Starts with an I. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days nor an old man who has not blank his days anybody know that anybody find it no more shall an infant from there live but a few days nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days for the child shall die 100 years old, but the sinner being 100 years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Now, understand that God is, is, is describing a very different world than we've ever known. Let's look at the next PowerPoint screen. They shall not labor in vain, vain nor bring forth children for, starting with a T, nor bring forth children for, Trouble, for they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox and dust shall be the serpent, serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord." Let's talk about this a little bit. For a thousand, there, there's three, there's several kinds of people here. First of all, there's us. The born again believers in Christ. The church is there. We have our, immor that we have our immortal bodies. We have our new bodies. Then there's going to be the, the saints who died in the Old Testament. The believing saints who died they're going to be there. Now, as much death as there was on the earth 
during the tribulation time, there are still people living through that. And they go from, they could be like millions of them, millions of people living, that, that were living in the tribulation, that go into the millennial reign. Now, they still are mortal. They do not have their immortal bodies. They are not born again yet. They so, so there'll be uh, uh, mortal, mortal people and immortal people. There'll be uh, born again believers in Christ with a new body and there'll be unbelievers with their old bodies like the ones we have now during the millennial reign. Now, as, as it described, there's not going to be any abortion because children will be let to live. And people will live hundreds of years old, if not the entire time. Can you imagine? You're going to be living for a thousand years old. You could be celebrating your uh, one, one thousandth and fiftieth birthday. Amen? <laughs> so, this is a, a, a unique time. Now, those, Im, those people that, are, that, that were alive during the tribulation that go into the millennial reign, they will continue to have children. They will have children, and then those children will have children, and those children have children, and they, they could live as, if they live righteously, they could live a thousand years. Okay? There's going to be millions of people Millions of people born during the millennial reign because there's not going to be much death. There'll still be sin, but there'll be no crime. There'll be no evil out in the open. There'll, people will still be thinking because sin starts here. Sin starts in our mind, right? Doesn't, doesn't Jesus say, if you hate a brother, that that's murder? There'll be no, but there'll be no outward crime there. There'll be no, no abortion there. There'll be all kinds of different things that take place because God is in control, not man. And he will rule with a rod of iron in loving humility, in love and, and peace. He will rule firmly. Amen. Now, let's continue. Now, so understand, understand, it's a completely different time, brothers and sisters. Complete, we're, we're transitioning from an evil world to a, to a world ruled by the Lord Jesus Christ and eventually a perfect world in the kingdom of heaven with a brand new earth and a brand new heaven and a brand new Jerusalem, Amen. okay? So let's read uh, the next PowerPoint screen. And it says, thus says the Lord, heaven, Shamayim, is my throne, throne my kisei, and the earth, Eretz, is my footstool. footstool, Hadam. Where's the house you will build me, and where's the pl place of my rest? For all these things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord, but on this one I will look, on him now, here's, these, here's, here's what God's saying. If you want God's attention, here's what you should do. On him who is poor or humble and of a contrite spirit. Of a humble and contrite spirit. A humble and remorseful spirit. And he who trembles, who fears my word, who fears my my counsel. That's the one God will look upon with loving kindness. Amen? Do you see it, brothers and sisters? That's the only thing that separates us from, from unbelievers is that we have a humble, contrite spirit before God and we tremble and fear at Him and His Word. Amen? Isn't that awesome? God loves us. His believers, His children. In the next PowerPoint screen, we continue on in chapter 20. And I saw thrones, and sitting on them were those to whom judgment, that is, the authority to act as judges, was given. 
And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God and those who had refused to worship the beast or his image and had not accepted his mark on their forehead and on their hand. And they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So there's going to be uh, born again believers with their glorified bodies and there's going to be people who lived through the tribulation and are now living in the millennial reign who do not have glorified bodies and they will reproduce and have children and then after a thousand years even living under God's rule there will be people who reject the Lord Jesus Christ look at the next PowerPoint screen and I think we'll get ready to close but the rest of the dead, the unsaved, did not live again until the thousand years were finished. Those who died during the tribulation stayed dead until after the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first, res first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests, priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Amen? Amen? Do you see it? Do you see it? And if you have any questions, just be sure to bring them in uh, to the Bible study, and we'll go over it in the next PowerPoint screen, because we have about five minutes left. And when the thousand years were completed, Satan will be released from the abyss and he will come out to deceive and mislead the nations which are in the four corners of the earth now remember with all that reproduction and and hardly any dying there's going to be millions and millions of people maybe billions of people restored on the earth remember the lord god jesus is going to refresh the earth we don't have to worry about destroying the the, the earth the lord jesus christ is in control of the earth he will restore it and refresh it and renew it. He will come out and deceive the nations which are on the four corners of the, of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together for the war. This is the last and final war. It's not the battle of Armageddon. It's the last and final war after the thousand years. Their number is like the sand of the seashore. There's still millions of them who reject Christ even though they're under his loving, caring, firm rule. And they are swarmed over the plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints. The saints. They're still trying to kill us. They're still trying to come after us <clears throat> and the beloved Jerusalem. But here, God doesn't take much time. But fire, <coughs> excuse me, but fire came down from heaven and consumed them. Boom, they were gone. They were gone. The devil who had deceived them was hurled into the lake of fire and the burning brimstone where the Antichrist and the false prophet are and they will be tormented day and night for how long? Forever. Forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, to be saved, to be born again, is the greatest thing that can happen to you. It is your greatest purpose. It is your greatest significance. It's your greatest achievement. You don't have to worry about having not made a legacy for yourself here on earth. If you're a born again child of God, you have infinitely more value than whatever anybody can do as a legacy here on earth. Is there a hallelujah in the house? Isn't that an amen? You got it. You made it. By being born again, you are winners. You are victorious. In fact, the scripture says you are more than conquerors because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not you. It's not all the great things you do. It's not all the nice things you do. It's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ who saved us and washed us and cleansed us. And he gave us his life. His perfect life to live. You're still, you're still Carmen. You're still Sil Sally. You're still Sylvia. You're still Stacy. You're still uh, Mary. You're still Mary. 
you're still married, but you're in the Lord Jesus Christ in the power of His Spirit. Amen? You are more than conquerors. Thank you, dear God. Thank you, dear God, for making us victorious over ourselves, sin, and the evilness of this world. Amen? It's not by your works of righteousness, but by His through you. Amen? Well, let us pray. We'll pause there. Uh, thank you, dear God. Thank you, dear God, so much for saving our souls. It is the greatest thing that can happen to us. Greater than anything on the face of the earth. No one could do anything greater than for, for you to have given your life to us and promises to redeem us if we bow down and through your saving faith that you give us, put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I keep repeatedly thanking the Father for letting me be, call him Father, for adopting me, for adopting us. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. Thank you, Jesus, for being my Redeemer, for shedding your blood, for, for giving your life for me, for washing me and cleansing me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for convicting me of my sin and my unrighteousness and that all of my works are as filthy rags. But the, and thank you for pointing me to the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and giving me saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I praise you and thank you, dear God, for loving me, for loving us, for caring for us. May we be your vessels. May we be your instruments. May we be your ministers. May we be your ambassadors. May we, may we be your voice of truth in all the world. Because we pray this and ask this in the most wonderful, powerful, righteous, glorious, holy name. Whose name, church? Jesus. Whose name? Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church. I hope you're encouraged. Bring all your questions. We're going to have some refreshments. And we'll continue on. We're just about done with the book of Revelation. God bless you.